talking of strength, one thing is there, you may not have seen me using it very often. It's because of a particular reason. The strength that planets obtain by Ashtakvarga. So Ashtakvarga, if you don't know, let me give you an introduction. Ashtakvarga is a table-like thing. Right? In this table-like thing, what there is separate Ashtakvarga for eight factors. Eight factors are Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn and Ascendant. Rahu Ketu are not included into it. So eight tables are there. Your horoscope is taken and then for the Ashtakvarga of Sun, the position of Sun will be taken. And from the placement of sun, sun will give point to different houses. Now in the same manner for the Ashtagvarga of sun, the position of moon will be taken and moon will give point to different houses from its placement in the table of sun. So in this particular manner, what will happen that in the table of sun, all the eight factors from sun to Saturn and Lagna will give different points, one one points to one one houses. Either they will give a point or they will not give a point. Now, because the maximum factors are 8, a house can get maximum 8 points or minimum of 0 points. Now, because maximum is 8 and minimum is 0, middle point is 4. Any house having more than 4 points is good. Any house having less than 4 points is bad. This is generally what is Ashtakvarga. Then these 8 Ashtakvargas are clubbed together. 8 different Ashtakvarga of Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, Ascendant are mixed together and Sarva Ashtakvarga is made. That is there, that is okay, fine. Now, in this particular case, though explicitly, strictly talking about it, Ashtakvarga may not be a strength factor. Ashtakvarga technically is not a strength factor, but is a support factor. As I explained to you right now, what is happening? The you know, a hor like you know, the position of sun is taken in your horoscope. And from that position, sun is giving point to different houses. And then in the same scenario, in the same table, you know, moon is giving point to different houses. Mars is giving point to different houses in the table of sun. Moon is giving point to different houses in the table of moon also, table of Mars also, table of Mercury also. Now, which houses moon will give point are different in the table of sun, in the table of moon, in the table of Mars, etc. So basically when the planet you know, gives a point to a particular house in Ashtakvarga of a certain planet, it is akin to the planet supporting that particular house. Right? So my point about Ashtakvarga is that Ashtakvarga is mutual support. Ashtakvarga indicates that if the planets are mutually supporting each other or not. So when a planet is getting four or more than four points in Ashtakvarga, that planet is being supported. Now, basically in the Ashtakvarga of Sun, when we analyze different houses with respect to the total points that they are getting from different planets in those houses, we are interpreting the signification of those houses, keeping in mind the basic signification of Sun. Right, that is the basic thing. Right, so it is support. So this is one thing that you should understand. If a planet... So what we are doing, what I am referring to, basic point, you check the Ashtakvarga of Sun. In that Ashtakvarga of Sun, check the Rashi where Sun is situated in and how much points that Rashi is getting. If it is getting 0, 1, 2, 3 points, that Rashi is weak. Sun is weak. If it is getting 4 points, Sun is mediocre. If it is getting 5, 6, 7, 8 points, the Sun is good. So giving you an example, say this is Jagannath Hora and this is Ashtakvarga. So you see, this is the Ashtakvarga of sun and this fourth house is highlighted. This is where the sun is actually placed in and it is having five points. So the sun is powerful. Now eight point is the maximum power. Five point is the minimum power. Four is middle, less than four is weak. So this sun is basically powerful. Now the power will change as per the points it is getting. And because it is getting five points, the sun is supported five times. Right? Now, my uses of Ashtakvarga is a bit different than what you have learned before. Because, see, what have happened in astrology is that some people have worked on Ashtakvarga, they take Ashtakvarga as everything. Right. Now, but for me, as a practicing astrologer, I use all the principles. 
So I cannot tell you that one principle is very supreme and other principle is not. I use Ashtagvaraga in a particular way only so that it does not contradict with other things. You see someone who may who will write a book on Ashtagvaraga or who have worked on Ashtagvaraga will try to say that Ashtagvaraga is superior than all other type of strength. They are true at that point. But me being an astrologer who is using almost everything, I can super emphasize things, right? We have to very clearly define the areas in which a particular strength or a weakness is working a particular way in which it behaves, right? So first thing that I am telling you that Ashtakvaraga is supported. That means to say how much that planet is supported. Now you see suppose sun. In this example, we have seen sun and sun is having five points. That means the sun is supported by five planets. What does it mean? See, in astrology, if you are timing event, for example, say for marriage, you are timing events related to marriage. You will use the Shantar Dasha and you will find the time of marriage. Marriage will happen. After marriage have happened, life partner, wife or husband will come into the life. Okay. After that, the wife part, life partner or wife or husband will not disappear. They will remain in your life. Of course. But the next Dashantar Dashas may not be connected to the seventh house at all because they are not indicating any significant result related to marriage, but still the life partner is there. And the happiness or otherwise of the marriage keeps on fluctuating. Right? That is the basic point. So when you talk of Dasha Antar Dasha, if the Dasha Antar Dasha is connected to the house, it is indicating a significant result related to that house. But after that time is over, the result does not disappear. It remains in your life. So you say if the seventh Lord is connected by all the eight planets, seventh Lord is supported by all the eight planets in Ashtakvarga. First of all, because it is supported, because support means what? Suppose sun is supporting Saturn. That means sun is also supporting the result of Saturn. In this particular scenario, whatever result that Saturn is going to give, sun will also support Saturn in giving that result. Mean you can realize the result of Saturn in the dasha of sun also because sun is supporting Saturn. So keeping this in mind, 80% of the horoscopes you will see that people are not married in the dasha antar dasha of 7th house lord etc. Right, seventh house and seventh house lot talks about marriage, but generally people are not married in the dasha of the seventh lot. But they are always married in the dasha of the planet who supports the seventh lot. Now remember, yeah, see, I am very much fed up of answering, you know, these questions, and sometimes it irritates me, frustrates me also. Sir, from Vimsha three dasha, this is not matching. Yeah, if you know only one dasha, this is your problem, not my problem. That according to me, you should use the applicable dasha for your horoscope, then test my principles because I teach, I propagate using the applicable dasha and I propagate not always using Vimshutri. So if you don't have complete knowledge of how I read horoscope, first watch all the videos, get an idea of how I watch horoscopes, then say nah, it is working or it is not working. It will work, it will 100% work my friend. Number of horoscopes that you have seen and analyzed is nothing in front of the horoscopes that I have seen and analyzed and making predictions every day, right? So proper analysis assessment you have to do and such things you don't, uh, if you don't say, then it is better. And coming back to my point. So what I am telling you, ki, if a planet is supported by, if a planet is getting more than five points in Ashtakvarga, that means it is supported by majority of planets. That means to say whatever is the result produced by that planet that will be present in, you know, that will be present for longer in the life of the native because many dashas will support the result of the planet. That because see, if the seventh lord is having six or more than six points in the Ashtagvarga, that means seventh lord is sub supported by six planets. That means six planets will support the result of marriage. That means the result, the, you know, the place of life partner will be very prominent in your life and life partner will be majorly helping you throughout your life. So when a planet is getting good points in Ashtakvarga, it means the planet is greatly supported. That means the result of planet will be present throughout the life of the native. One enjoys the result for longer time. First of all. And 
secondarily because more than four astravarga points also means positive. Generally, when the planet is getting more than four points in astravarga, it also makes the planet positive. But one thing I have seen with respect to astravarga, I don't use astravarga with house lordship. I use astravarga with significatorship only. You must have seen if you have seen how I am doing horoscopes, how I do horoscopes. I give more importance to house lord as compared to significator. So when you ask me about marriage, I will give more importance to the seventh lord than to Venus. This does not mean I will ignore Venus. Of course, I will see Venus also. But then once again, I cannot see Venus and seventh lord using the same tools. If Venus is exalted and say Venus is the lord of the seventh house also and lord of, see Venus is the lord of uh, fourth house and Venus is the significator of seventh house also. That means to say ki, if the Venus is powerful, it will give good result of 7th house also or 4th house also. Or in that particular scenario when Venus is 7th Lord as well and he is already a significator of marriage in the case when the Ascendant is Aries or Scorpio. Then if Venus becomes powerful, then House Lord is also powerful, significator is also powerful. How you are differentiating? If house lord becomes powerful, the planet as significator also becomes powerful. According to me, it should not be the case. Right? So, to decide about the karak result or significator result of the planet, I resorted to Ashtakar. Right? To decide the karak or significator related result of the planet, I resort to Ashtakar. When I see planet as a house lord, I go by normal principles of exaltation, debilitation, friendly sign, inimical sign, Vargotta, Muldrikon, etc. But when I have to see the planet as a significator, I go to Ashtakavarga points. Right? So this is the differentiating part. So as we say that planet becomes beneficial or good result giving when it is getting more than four points in Ashtakavarga, when checking this, you should only use the natural significations of planets. And house lordship of the planet, you can ignore. So any planet who is getting more than five point five or more than five points in Ashtakavarga will give very good result related to the significations of the planet. This is one major thing. And secondarily, the result of the planet, whatever is the result, will be present for very long in your life because that result will be, because the result is supported by multiple planets, that means in the Dasha and Tardasha of these multiple planets, the result will be prominently placed in, prominently present in your life, which makes you enjoy the result for long. This is also the thing. Secondarily, see one more thing is there. Life is like, if you take all the factors which influence a particular area, as per astrology, Proper distribution is made to all the nine planets, right? So you say all happiness of marriage, like for example, whatever is the happiness of marriage, wife should be beautiful also, wife should be loving also, wife should be caring also, wife should be well-wisher also, all of these things, you know? So whatever are the traits, etc. of wife or whatever are the traits, etc. of good marriage are equally distributed among all the seven planets. Right, because eighth factor is the ascendant is well distributed between the seven planets and as the planet here we will take venus because house lord i am not using here we will take venus as venus is supported by seven planets it means that all the good results that one should have from marriage or all the good qualities that the life partner should possess the life partner of this native will possess in other cases, when up when planets are not giving points to Venus, that means whatever are the significations, attributes indicated by those planets that may not be present in the nature, behavior, character of the life partner. In the same manner, profession also. Profession should provide you with stability. Profession should provide you with name, fame, status. Profession should provide you with contacts, etc., Whatever things that profession may provide is equally distributed in by all the seven planets and as the significator of profession, which is Mercury. Mercury is the significator for 10th house. Remember that. Mercury is the primary signification significator for 10th house. And as Mercury is supported by all the seven planets, it means you get maximum things from your profession. 
the planets who are not giving point to the house where mercury is situated in will indicate that these things you are lacking in your profession these are the you know these happiness which generally profession gives to everyone will not be enjoyed by the native this is my third point secondarily see generally speaking the prime uses of ashtakvarga however sages intended it and you remember and you notice this point that i generally refer to sages i don't refer to other astrological practitioners right so as our sages intended to use it the prime uses of ashtakvarga is with respect to transit result so in transit result you see the interpretation of transit result as nowadays people are doing is somehow if i don't use the word flawed then it is very limited somehow very limited so what i am trying to say is in transit we see that jupiter is jupiter gives good result in transit saturn gives bad result in transit that is only one thing if a house is transited by a prominent planet prominent result related to that house will happen if a house is transited by a weak planet weak result related to that house may happen weak result means suppose seventh house is transited by a weak planet then weak result will happen that means relationship may start but it will be short term so weak result now a strong planet is in transiting through a house or weak planet is transiting through a house whether the planet is strong or weak how you will decide to use astrology website first thing secondarily for some people what i have seen for some people jupiter's transit gives good result for some people saturn's transit also gives good result right and if you have seen horoscope like if you have seen multiple horoscopes not only engaged in your horoscope but you have you have seen multiple horoscopes you will also notice this so whether jupiter is more beneficial for the native or saturn is more beneficial for the native should be decided by the ashtakvarga points that jupiter is having versus the ashtakvarga points that saturn is having because as i told you if the planet gets more than four points in ashtakvarga the planet not only becomes powerful but becomes positive also so the one who is having saturn getting more than four ashtakvarga points or saturn having more points than jupiter they are actually having saturn as a beneficial planet and for these people the transit of saturn through different houses gives very prominent result as compared to other planets right so these two things are also there whenever we are talking of transit the transit of which planet will be primary result producing which planet will give good result in transit and which planet will give bad result in transit that also should be decided based on ashtakvarga a planet who is getting very good point through ashtakvarga when transiting through a house gives very good result related to that particular <clears throat> specifically between the slow moving planets so saturn versus jupiter this principle should be primarily used to decide <clears throat> the transit of which planet will give the most prominent or the best result of the house all right so in transit also ashtakvarga is a very indispensable tool that you cannot ignore that you cannot ignore now see one more thing is there generally marriage to one have one marriage only it generally one have one marriage is two marriages only but when it comes to relationship people generally have multiple relationships in their life so when it comes to multiple things now when it comes to multiple things generally multiple things now exaltation retrogression which indicates multiplicity generally indicate multiplicity in those things which people generally have in one quantity only marriage etc but things which are generally available in multiple quantities for example people who are not having a you know like if someone is born into a dual ascendant then they are very you know very much susceptible to changing jobs very often now these people or in the matters of relationship which people have in plenty how do you decide how many relationships one will have etc then in this particular scenario the house from the significator because once again ashtakvarga significator house from the significator should be taken so when you are talking of relationship add the points that venus is getting 
that Venus is getting in the Rashi where Venus is situated in Rastak Varga and seventh from that Rashi at the point and this is the number of relationship that one may generally have. People born in dual ascendant, they are they will often change their jobs or people who are into job, they work in the same profile. If someone is an MBA, they can get a job which suits the profile of an MBA only. So profile remains MBA only, but they can change their job because they are into job. So how many jobs one will change? The significator for a job is Mercury. Take the point in the Ashtagvarga of Mercury. Take the point that that sign is getting where Mercury is situated and take the point in 10th from Mercury. Add this and it indicates the number of jobs that one is supposed to change. Right. So this is also an important result that things which are to be there in plenty, things which are available in plenty. How you know, things which are generally available in a plenty, how much of, how, what will be the quantity of these results? That should also be decided based on Ashtagvarga. Right, based, like, so these are some of the prime uses of Ashtagvargas, which I thought to share with you in this particular video, specialities related to Ashtagvarga. But you should remember, you know, the biggest problem that have happened nowadays that people think that Ashtagvarga is a technique. Whereas according to me, Ashtagvarga is a system in itself, right? Parashari astrology, traditional astrology, Jaimini astrology, Tajik astrology, these are systems. In the same manner, Ashtagvarga is also a system. Secondarily, in the current, you know, in the current condition of Ashtagvarga, there are some flaws. For an example, a planet who is combust technically is not able to produce a result. A planet who is exalted should produce very strong result. But talking of Ashtagvarga, combust planet also gives one point and planet in exaltation also gives one point why this thing. If the planet is supposed to not give result at all, then how they are contributing points in Ashtagvarga. So many such questions are there which are not answered, which is not answered by anyone, even those people who have wrote books on Ashtagvarga or not by any practitioner. But these questions I have tried to answer in my Ashtagvarga course that I have done earlier in 2023, I think. Ashtagvarga course I have done there. I have answered all of these questions and many unknown hidden techniques related to Ashtagvarga, which generally people don't know I have covered there. In fact, I have also introduced three, four of my original researches related to see what I call as original research. A research which is generally, you know, the principles etc. are told by sages. And I teach my understanding or my interpretation of the principles. But in doing so, sometimes I also develop such principles, factors, techniques, which are not mentioned by any RC or which are not taught by anyone else before, but is completely my invention. These I call as original, these I call as original researches. So many original researches I related to Ashtagvarga, I have also shared in the Ashtagvarga course, Shubham Alok Ashtagvarga method, Shubham Alok Ashtagvarga chart and many such original researches I have also shared in that Ashtagvarga course. So if you want to learn about Ashtagvarga in depth, you can join that particular course, the recordings of which are available for purchase. So that you can do. Right. Thank you for watching.